It's the last episode. Welcome back to my How to Paint Mice and Mystic series. This is the last episode, and today we'll be painting Colin and Tilda. I looked up how to pronounce the name. Yeah, it turns out it was an A, not an E this entire time. Oops. Colin is the prince of the story of Mice and Mystics, if you didn't know, and thus he is a little differently colored than the other characters. For one, he is a brown mouse, which is different from all the gray mouses we've had thus far, and he has a very bright red cloak. We all know how much I love painting cloaks, so Colin's will be a lot of fun. Tilda is the healer and is a priest in the universe of Mice and Mystics, or a priestess, I should say, and she is the one of the support characters for the game. She is a gray mouse, but she has very bright white robes, and we're going to be working a lot on building up and making that really nice bright white without losing the detail that the sculptor has left for us in her folds on the robes that she's wearing. In addition, she has a very bright purple hood, so you know I'm going to be painting that purple. Speaking of purple, these are the paint colors that you'll need for painting these figures with today's episode. In addition, kind of works out we have red here, we're going to be painting the bases of all of the hero figures during this episode because I wait to paint all of the hero figure bases at the same time so I'm sure that the colors are all consistent and match. So unlike the previous episodes with painting the heroes, these two figures don't have a lot of color overlap. And so we're going to be painting a lot of things separately between them with not a lot of, you know, consistency. But because of the layering on Colin's cloak and Tilda's robes, it sort of makes sense to still paint them at the same time because we can like paint the other one while the first one is drying and so on and so forth for painting all their clothing items. On that note, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm sort of going to play tennis between these two figures as we paint them, and this is just the order that I painted them so that there was drying time between the two figures as I was going and changing and swapping colors. So first off, we paint Colin's fur. Colin is the only brown mouse in this series, and so I'm just going to make a very unique brown for his fur. We use a lot of brown in the other figures that we're painting for their equipment or clothing, and I want Colin to not just look like Maganos's robe or Fitch's tunic if that or cloak if that makes sense. So what I did was I mixed my medium brown and my light brown with equal amounts and thinned it to my normal ratio uh, to get a new brown which is somewhere in the middle of those two colors. I used that new brown to paint all of Colin's fur. The tricky areas for Colin's fur would just be his tail. He has a similar tail situation going on as Fletch and Lilia, or Lily, where his tail is on the back and the inside of his cloak, so don't forget that. And then he also is like, his tail is like wrapped around his right foot, so just make sure you get that little bit of the tail as you're painting his feet and his hands and his chest. Another tricky area, speaking of his chest, is his chest. So Colin has a chest strap going across his chest, but then he has fur on either side. At first I thought it was a shirt, but it's definitely fur. Uh, so make sure you get the two little sections of his chest between the chest strap and his cloak and his arms. There's also a little tiny bit of his chest under his left arm where, cause he's holding his sword up, right? Like a baseball bat sort of. And there's just a little bit of like his ribs under his arm, his left arm. So make sure you get that one as well with this brown. As with our other figures, feel free to do many layers of this brown to build it up to the tone that you would like, making sure not to lose any detail on the fur texture. For Tilda, we're gonna paint her a light gray. For me, this was Celestia Gray from Citadels, and I just thinned it to my normal amount and painted her fur. There's not a lot of her showing. She has her face, her hands, and her little adorable toes, and then she has her tail. Her tail is wrapped around the back of her robes, or just going straight up the back of her robes, and is really hard to miss, so don't forget her tail. Also, don't forget the back of her ears, which is totally something I forgot, because it's kind of, there's very little fur for her, and I just forgot a crucial part of it. <laughs> While you have this light gray out, we're actually going to darken it a teeny tiny bit with a medium gray, so I use shadowed stone for this, just to darken it a little bit, and I thinned it a little bit more with like an extra drop of water, and then I mix it really well, 
And then what I did with the fine tip brush was I painted the lower recesses of her robes, mostly just along the bottom hem, just with a simple one stripe of this paint, not layered, not built up, just one stripe up. I also painted she on her shoulders. She's got a little bit right here. Basically any lower recesses of folds on her robes or darker areas of her robes, like in her armpit, I painted kind of a section that would be the shadow cast by her arm that is out. You wanna paint with this color. The reason we're doing that is we're not actually gonna do a wash to Tilda's robes. We're gonna do it to the rest of her, but we're gonna avoid the robes because we want the robes to be nice and bright and crisp white. And one of the best ways to do that is to actually paint the robes a gray color and then slowly add white and highlight up from that gray to a pure white. And we're gonna do that. But we still wanna have those shadows and low light areas of the clothing. And to gain that, I just wanted to paint really quickly some simple shadows of the areas that would be darker for me to later brighten and lighten up. So I'm doing this instead of painting a wash and I just wanted to call out why I was doing that. Tilda is the most difficult figure to paint, I feel, just because of the white on her robes. And you could totally just paint white and then do a wash and then do some highlighting with white, but I really like how my technique has it be more gradual and gives some depth without having like super sharp, crisp darks like you would get with a wash. Let's move on to the accessories. So with a medium brown, which for me was harvest brown, I just painted some of these figures' accessories. Specifically, I painted Colin's chest strap, but not his belt. I paint that a darker color later. And then I also painted Colin's pommel of his sword. So not the hilt, which is like the cross guard part, I think. I might be making up these terms. I didn't paint the crossbar part. I painted the handle part of Colin's sword, the medium brown, okay? And then with Tilda, I painted her mace staff, the wooden bit, with the medium brown as well. I also painted Tilda's pouch, which is tiny and adorable, and you really don't need a lot of paint for medium brown on this figure. Though, if you have extra paint, that's okay, because we're gonna make that bronze color that we've made before. So I went ahead and added to my medium brown some metallic gold, which for me was antique gold from Reaper Minis. Mix it up really well, and then go ahead and paint Colin's cuffs, Tilda's necklace, the little charm on her necklace, the little like belt buckle-ish thing she has on her rope belt, and her a tiny adorable head charm, which is on her hood in the middle of her forehead. Colin also has a tiny little clasp holding his cloak on that you should probably not forget to paint, which I forgot to mention. Then I took a little bit of Murfang Brown and painted Colin's belt a darker brown color because I liked the darker brown on the fur that he has. I wanted it to pop a little bit more. If you're not happy with the color of the chest strap being Harvest Brown, which is a little close to Colin's fur, go ahead and use Murfang Brown for that as well. I then mixed a little bit of white with a little bit of light brown, which for me was leather brown, and I painted Tilda's rope belt. You wanna be very careful painting this rope belt. And the way that I do it is I have very, very little paint on my brush, and I just sort of like do the dry brushish technique where you just paint the top of each segment of that rope. I also use a little bit of shadowed stone to paint the crossbar hiltish part of Colin's sword. So the, the guard part, I guess. I don't know sword anatomy, I'm sorry. I used a little bit of metallic gray, which for me is honed still, to paint Colin's sword and Tilda's mace ball, just the ball part. You wanna make sure when you're painting the ball that you get all of the little nubbins, the spiky bits of the ball. We're gonna go back later and shine those up, but you do wanna make sure they have a good base coat of this metallic gray color. All that's left is the clothing. So we're gonna do a basic purple for Tilda's hood headpiece. Thing. You want to make sure that you're being very careful as you paint around the edges of her face and the edges of the hood part that rests along the robe. Because the robe are going to have white, um, if you get purple paint, it's okay. Try to clean it off as fast as you can, but we can go back later and cover it up with the gray base mixture that we'll be using to start painting Tilda's robes. But if you can try and avoid it, try to avoid it. Um, I use the minimal amount of paint and like the side of the brush technique to paint along those edges of her hood. But again, if you get it on the robes, that's fine. We can go back later and clean it up. If you're using thin layers of the purple for that edge bit and just building it up slowly, it's even easier to cover up any mistakes that you have in the future on her robes. 
For Colin's cloak, we're just going to paint it a brilliant red. For me, that was Mephiston red from Citadels, and I just thinned it my usual amount and had a lot of fun painting this cloak. I will say, because I want Colin's cloak to pop a bit more than Flitch and Lily's cloaks did, I actually kept the outside of the cloak the bright red, thinned a little bit, and then for the inside of the cloak, I mixed a little bit of my leftover shadowed stone with the red, like very little, and I painted the inside of the cloak this darker red color to really bring a contrast between the inside and the outside of his cloak. Because we're going to bring the color of the cloak down with a wash in the future, I wanted to make sure that the inside of the wash starts a little darker because on the outside we're actually going to bring up the highlights even more than we normally do. And I really want that contrast between darkness and brightness to be more prominent than a wash, just a wash, can provide. Speaking of the wash, if you would like, you may now wash, Colin. That sounded weird. I used Agrax Earthshade, which is of course my favorite wash ever, to wash all of Colin. Make sure you get all the nooks and crannies, including the bit between his foot and his tail. Make sure not a lot of wash pools in that area, because that's not good. And just, you know, generally move it around and make it flow, like the spice. There's no spice in this game. There's cheese though. For Tilda's wash, I went ahead and did a black wash on only her fur, her hood, her belt and her pouch. So you wanna make sure you get her little adorable toes peeking out from the robe. And you also wanna make sure that the seam between her toes and her robe has a good wash color on it to get that shadow. You also wanna make sure you wash her hands and you wanna make sure that you wash her face and her hood and the edge between the hood and the cloak, but not too much there, and then just her belt. And I use a fine tip brush and do a more controlled wash on her because I don't want too much wash going onto her robe. I don't want any wash going onto her white robe if I can help it. All right, so let's talk about Colin's cloak first and then we'll go and do Tilda's robes because Tilda's robes are the most time consuming part of this entire painting process. For Colin's cloak, we're gonna build up the colors just like we did with Lily and Flitch's cloak. So what that means is we're gonna leave the darker folds, the bottom of the folds on Colin's cloak, that dark color that we get from the wash, but we're gonna build up thin layers of red on top of the higher parts of the cloak folds to really heighten and bring it in. Then on the upper layers of the cloak, we're actually gonna go with a brighter color. So the way that I achieve that brighter color is I take the red that I'm thin and using and I add a little bit of pink or white, it's up to you, to, and I mean like a little bit, of the white or pink color to this thinned mess. Make sure you're always thinning whenever you add new paints for this and paint a little bit less every time until you're almost painting like a very, not quite rosy, like a rich rosy red-ish pink on the very top ridges of certain sections of his cloak. I don't paint all of the high ridges of his cloak, this very, very bright, bright reddish, almost pinkish color. I just as I'm building up the layers, I'll start painting a little less of the folds, not only like size-wise, like painting less of each individual fold, but I'll also paint less folds in general until I'm really focusing on the parts of his cloak near his shoulder where he has shoulder pulled back because of the sword. I paint those ones the brightest because I wanna draw attention to his sword. And then I also paint the ones by his left leg where the fabric has pulled back because of his foot, I paint those the brightest as well. Really with this as with the other cloaks, just paint and go with what makes sense. If you need to stop, put it down, walk away for a bit, and then come back, that's fine. But you're gonna be painting a lot of layers. I don't really know how many layers I paint, maybe like 10, 12, something like that for the cloak, but it's a lot. For Tilda, we're gonna use the same highlighting technique, but we're gonna actually change the color of the paint that we're putting on every time. And so you'll see as I paint these layers, I paint a little bit on my hand and show it to the camera to really show the progression of color from gray up to white. The color that we wanna start with for her robes would be a light gray mixed with a little bit of white. So a slightly lighter gray than her fur color. And I mean very slightly. You're gonna thin that color a little bit more than you thinned for painting her fur, and then you're just gonna paint the entire robe, including the folds, lower folds, where we painted that shadow color earlier. You're gonna do a couple layers of that until the edges of that shadow color that we painted previously are more blended in with this new color, and then you're gonna bring the tone of the gray that you're painting up a notch by adding more white. So you're gonna add a little bit of white, 
a little bit of water if you need to, and then you're gonna go ahead and paint a little bit less of the folds of the figure. So we're not gonna go deep into the shadows anymore, we're just gonna paint the very edges of those dark shadows that we have, and then everything else. We're gonna keep doing that by adding a little bit of white, reducing how much we're painting of the robes, both in areas of each individual fold and the robes overall, and we're gonna be adding a little bit of water as needed to maintain that thinner consistency until we feel that we're up to the point where we're just painting basically white. And when we get to that point where we're just painting basically white, we wanna be focusing on the brightest points of her robe. For me, that was her front knee and the folds on top of her foot because I wanted to draw attention to that leg and how she was posing in such a manner. I also highlighted the top of her arm that was outstretched and pointing because I thought that was important to draw attention to that because it's sort of almost like she's like casting something, right? I also went ahead and made sure that this shoulder that was bent holding the mace is a little brighter too. Not quite as bright as her wrist, the tops of her robes on her wrist or the top of her knee, but still it was one of the last areas where I stopped painting layers before I just went pure white on the top of this sleeve and her knee in addition to her chest, which is weird to talk about, but she does have a very prominent chest for a mousy figure, and I always made sure to be painting less and less of her chest until I was basically just painting the top part, like right here, um, in addition to the arm and the top of the knee. From close up, it's going to look like the areas of her robe where you haven't really been painting as much are gray, and technically they are. But if you put the figure out at like kind of tabletop distance, you'll see that these layers of gray and white really bring contrast and make the fold and movement of her robes more lifelike. If we were to paint the entire robe section white and then just do a wash, we wouldn't have as much movement looking fabric as we do by doing this layering technique. It really does help make her look like she's stepped forcefully. And I think one of the reasons the folds on her robe are so very creased and very well defined is because the sculptor knew that her robes were predominantly white, which meant that they would be painted white and thus would lose a lot of shadow and depth unless the painter added some of it back in like we have. We're almost done, I promise. Next up, we're just gonna do a quick dry brushing highlight on the weaponry. So using a metallic silver, for me that's polished silver from Reaper Minis, I just did a quick dry brushing on Tilda's mace ball, focusing on the spike areas, and Colin's sword, focusing on the sharp edge. <laughs> if you'd like, you can do a little bit of touch up on the bronze areas we painted earlier, bringing back some brightness and shine that the wash may have dulled by using just straight metallic gold. Don't worry about using the bronze color, we're just doing a thin highlight coat. Then all that's left is the ears, nose, and eyes. So I painted the ears and nose pink like I did with the other hero figures, and then did black on the eyeballs carefully with a circular motion and my fine tip brush, and then added a little glint of white into the middle of the eyes in the areas that made the most sense for the figure to be looking. You can help find that glint by shining a bright light onto the figure. It helps if it's behind you, so then you can like still paint it. Um, but you're just gonna do a little tiny dot of white, like a dot. Um, and I find the brush that I use to be very good at this, it's a makeup brush. You can find a link to it down below in the doobly-doo. And that's it, we're done. Colin and Tilda are some of the brightest figures in this game. And I hope this video helped you understand how I achieved the looks that I achieved for these figures, especially Tilda's robes, which I know can be difficult. All that's left to do is to base all of the figures. So for me, I wanted to wait until all of my figures were painted and then paint all of the hero bases at the same time, so I would just have to mix one batch of paint. For me, I decided to do a red paint to match the red tones of the game cover and game art itself and have the heroes kind of have a nice, bright, but still dark contrast to the villain bases, which I painted gray. To achieve the color that I thought best matched the game art, I chose to take two drops of red with one drop of gray, the medium gray, which for me was shadowed stone, mix it really well, and I actually doubled that recipe so I'd have enough to do all of the bases. I also added a couple drops of water to help give it a nice thin consistency. While painting the hero bases, I will say that it's easiest to start with Ness because it's just his feet on the base, his tail is nice and tucked up, and then advance along the figures moving to the most difficult, who I believe is Colin. Colin. 
for the most part, you can get away by just sliding the base paint in and around the figures along the edges, similar to how we painted the centipede or the rats, right? It's pretty similar basing. Collins is just a little tricky because of how his tail wraps around his foot, but there's still a little tiny gap where you just want to take your fine tip brush and just kind of like dot the base color in there. I accidentally got a little bit of red on Collins' foot, didn't realize it till later, and then I decided it's cool because it's red, so it just looks like blood, I guess. <laughs> ah, it works for me. For me, I like when the paint that I got on the base accidentally shines through the base color that I paint. It adds some texture and interest to the bases, kind of like how a real floor would, and so I let it be. If you're not a fan of that, you're just gonna have to paint a few more layers on this base to make sure you cover it up and get a nice, even, consistent color, which means you're probably just gonna have to add and mix a little bit more paint. And that's it! That is the Mice and Mystic figures from the main game. I hope that you enjoyed this painting tutorial series. I hope that you found it really helpful, and I would love to see your figures. You can email me at theontar at gmail.com, send me a tweet, an Instagram post, or a Facebook message if you'd like. I really, really do like seeing the progress that people have as they follow this tutorial and paint these figures. If you go ahead and use different colors than me, that's fine. If you use different techniques, that's fine too. I just like seeing how people are painting their figures. I just want to give a shout out of thanks to Jerry Hawthorne, the designer of the game Mice and Mystics, for creating such an awesome game with a fantastic world with such awesome characters. I also want to thank the sculptor Chad Hooverter, sorry Chad if I pronounced that wrong, for doing such an amazing job on these minifigs and inspiring so many people to get into board game painting because of these adorable mice. Also to John Air Arisa, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, for designing and painting such a beautiful illustration of the characters in the game that I was inspired to use as reference for my painting. Also, just a huge thank you to Plaid Hat Games for making this game exist in the world <laughs> so that we can play it and paint it. Also, thank you to you for watching along with this series. If you've enjoyed this episode or this series as a whole, make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video down below. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on future series that we do, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And yes, I will be doing future how to paint guides for different games in the board gaming world. No, I don't think the Mice and Mystics Series 2 figures are on that list. Though, I do have a copy of Tail Feathers, and those birds are calling to me. But I ain't promising anything yet. <laughs> Alright, I think that's it for now. And the sun has set. Until next time, I guess. Sweet. I wonder if anything.